All right, this is fifth grade module one, lesson three, and we're going to be talking about using exponents to describe our base ten, our uh, powers of ten. So write the following in exponential form. So what does that mean? So you got this chart here, and we're going to begin with 10 to the first power. Well, what does 10 to the first power mean? Well, 10 to the first power means 10. And 10 to the second power means 10 times 10. And 10 to the third power means 10 times 10 times 10. And 10 to the fourth power means, you got it, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, etc., etc., etc. And so then what we can do is we could grab a calculator if we want, make our life go a little bit quicker. And so 10, way over here, 10 simply means 10. And then 10 times 10, well, we might probably know that from third grade, is 100. Using a calculator, 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. And 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 equals 10,000. And what we want is for students to start recognizing a pattern. And so teachers, parents, give your students an opportunity to look at these three rows. And really, the patterns uh, not only exist in each row, but there's also patterns that exist in each column. For example, 10 to the third means there's three tens, means there's three zeros. 10 to the fourth means there's four tens, and there's four zeros. So the idea is we want students not only to see the patterns that are in each column, but we also want them to see the patterns that are in each row. And so the idea is uh, we're just going to um, take each of these problems and write them in exponential form, which is this top row right here. So 1,000 represents is represented by 10 to the third power. We can see that 10 times 10, it's right here, is equal to 10 to the second power. Let's move way over here. Oh, a million. We don't have a million on our chart, do we? But we can count and say that there's six zeros, so automatically we know that that's going to be 10 to the sixth power based on the pattern that we saw down here in this beautiful table. So now we're supposed to be writing in standard form. So using the same chart that we had on our previous slide, we know that, let's see, right here, 4 times 10 to the third power means we're going to do 4 times 1,000, which is equal to 4,000. All right, so let's zoom out. And uh, let's do, oh, let's do this one. 5,300 divided by 10 to the second power. So that means... 5,300 divided by 100, and we've learned that that means you're going to chop off two zeros, or you're going to move the decimal place two places to the left, or it means you're going to move each of the digits two places to the right. It's so many different ways to think of it, but it gives us the final answer of 53. So let's zoom out. And let's do, oh, let's do E. So we're going to do 6.072 times 1,000. And we know uh, from our previous videos that that means the decimal uh, is going to move three places to the right. Or another way to think of it is each of the digits is going to move three places to the left because we're getting bigger. We're multiplying uh, by a 1,000, which means the answer, this number, is going to get bigger. And that becomes 6,072. And I'll say because the decimal moves three places to the right. All right, and you get the idea. And so parents and teachers, the purpose of, whoa, these problems is to just give our students plenty of opportunity to practice moving from this exponential notation 
to the standard form. So here we're just going to complete the pattern. So parents and teachers, we just want students to look at the numbers and see if they can find the pattern. Um, initially, they might just get the answer but not be able to explain the mathematics of what's going on. They might describe it in terms of how the numbers look. Um, but here, we're going to put a 2, and then a 200, and then a 2,000. And so the idea would be, well, what's going on? And try and help students say, oh, it's multiplying by 10. It's multiplying by 10. It's multiplying by 10. In this case, uh, if we wanted to look at E down here, oh boy, we went from here to here. In that case, the decimal has moved two places to the right in order to go from here to 950. It moved two places to the right. And again, from 950 to 95,000, the decimal again moved two places to the right, and that gave us 95,000. So each time the decimal is moving two places to the right, which gives us 95,000, zero, 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 two extra zeros. And then we're going to do 95,000, zero, 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 and then add two extra zeros. And then going backwards, back here, we need to kind of like make it smaller by two columns. So this decimal is going to move two places to the left. So one, two, that gives us 0 0.095. So the question is, what's going on as we move to the right? Well, we're multiplying by 100 each time. That's why the decimal is moving two places to the right, or that's why we're adding two zeros. And this last problem for this video is we're supposed to solve these and then just talk about the relationships, what's going on. So we're going to start with 247 divided by 10 to the second power. So that really means 247 divided by 100. And we know that each of these digits are going to move two columns to the right because we're making it smaller. And that means the decimal is going to move two places to the left, so the answer ends up being 2.47, 2 and 47 hundredths. Whereas if we're going to do 247 times 10 to the second power, that means it's 247 times 100. And in this case, we're making it bigger because we're multiplying by 100. So each of these digits are going to move two columns to the left, which makes the decimal look like it's moving to the right two places. So that becomes 24,700. So the decimal moves two places to the right. So what's the difference? Well, when you're dividing, one way to say this is when you're dividing by 10 to the second power, it moves the decimal two places to the left. And when you're multiplying by 10 to the second power, it moves two places. The decimal moves two columns to the right. That's one way to explain it. And that wraps up fifth grade module one, lesson three, where we're really starting to use those standard common shortcuts for explaining the patterns of where that decimal point goes.